right, welcome back to Epicus Gamicus Musicus, here for Year by Year 1982. Um, and uh, who's going first this time? I think you're up first. All right, um, so mine is The Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden, uh, Bruce Dickinson's first album, and uh, probably the classic Iron Maiden album. Yeah, I'd have to say so, yeah. I mean, well, Number of the Beast, first of all, is the uh, the gem of Iron Maiden. Yeah, that's true. And I, I actually once listened to Number of the Beast all day one day just to see if I'd get bored. And I didn't. <laughs> I just listened to it all day. It was fine. I, I enjoyed it every single time. So I must have listened to it like 20 times in a row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a big uh, fan of this album. And I, I definitely was in middle school. This is like what I listened to in middle school. So. Got you. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah, you got Number of the Beast. You got Run to the Hills. That's That's a cool one. Yeah, that's uh, rock band core right there. Yeah. That's how everybody got into Iron Maiden. Um, got The Prisoner, about the uh, obscure British TV show The Prisoner, <laughs> with, the, with the, the spoken word intro and everything. You are not a number. You are number six. <laughs> and all this stuff, <laughs> which is actually directly from the show. They took it right from the show oh. intro. did not know that. And interestingly, um, Rush actually did an album about... Oh no, that's Twilight Zone. Never mind. Yeah, they both Iron Maiden and Rush both did a song about the Twilight Zone, not the Prisoner. And then also you got Invaders, uh, Children of the Damned, um, Hallowed Be Thy Name, my personal favorite, one of the great metal ballads. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but sums it up. Your next first. All right. Uh, my next album is Diver Down for Van Halen. Another Van Halen album. Yeah, we haven't seen our uh, Van Halen in a while. <laughs> but my personal favorites, um, Little Guitars. It's just a really good. It's really good guitars, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah where, have all the, where have all the good times gone? The cover of Roy Orbison's Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman. <laughs> walking down the street. Yeah, that, uh, this is. This is an interesting period for Van Halen. They start doing covers and playing around with different, like, Spanish guitars and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty interesting. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, I mean, what well, ends with Happy Trails. <laughs> <laughs> happy Trails <laughs> to you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, sorry, Van Halen are... Definitely an entertaining band to listen to if you listen to them from the beginning and forward. Yeah. Just the crazy ideas they like to try. Well, I will say Dancing in the Street Yeah. That was, was a little weak if you compare it to the original. Yeah. It doesn't quite have the the energy of the original Dancing in the Street. It's kind of a sad version of it. It is. Oh, sorry. I had a hiccup coming. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll move on. Uh, my next one is Blackout by the Scorpions. Another album I used to listen to in middle school. Quite a lot. I remember, um, I think my MP3 player broke, so I borrowed my dad's Sony Discman. <laughs> and this is the album I took with me, so I just listened to, to uh, Blackout uh, yeah. over and over again. Yeah. No One Like You. It's one of their big hits. Yeah, and then, of course, the title track as well. Yeah, that one's cool. Can't live without you. Can't live. I can't live without you. Um, there's dynamite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of classics on this, and I'd say, I think um, generally, Love at First Sting is considered the Scorpions classic, but I'd I'd say this one really should be. It's a lot, um, kind of indicative of what the Scorpions sound like most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. But the Scorpions kind of go through phases. They do. They do. You may remember way back uh, when we did, uh, was it 76, I think? Fly to the Rainbow. They've come a long way since, oh, 74, actually. Fly to the Rainbow is, they've come a long ways from Fly to the Rainbow <laughs> to Blackout. It's uh, a lot of changes. Yeah, but. definitely. So, uh, next one is Screaming for, v oh, no, hang on. You're supposed to go first. Oh, my next one is, this is an interesting little... Side deal here. Um, a bit of synth pop from Duran Duran. Hell yeah. From Rio. It's a couple of fun songs there. Rio, Hungry Like the Wolf. Yeah. 
A lot of band, a lot of songs, which if you start singing them, you really can't stop. Yeah, <laughs> they're just so catchy. Yeah, Rio and Hunger Like the Wolf are. It's pretty much impossible to stop singing them. Yeah. And you've also got Save a Prayer. Yeah. It's yeah. a good, good one. Um, is there any other good songs in here? I don't recognize any of the titles. <laughs> I guess now we can actually talk about Screaming for Vengeance properly now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the right time period. And as I said um, in the 1980 episode, this is the classic Priest album, but I really think the classic should be British Steel. Yeah. That said, this is still a truly excellent album. I mean, you've got... Title track is really good. Yeah. I mean, and Electric Eye. Another thing, Kevin. Yeah. I'm per- I personally like Take These Chains. Yeah, it's a nice, I don't know, like sort of pseudo ballad type deal. Uh, what you got? Bloodstone, another uh, Rob Halford uh, high vocals <laughs> showcase there. Um, Devil's Child, although the lyrics are kind of weird because it's, it's, it's like, "You're the devil, you're the devil's child," huh? That doesn't make any yeah. sense. What? <laughs> Still a great song though. So I'm. Not <laughs> 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 yeah, this is. Probably the peak of Judas Priest. They kind of go downhill for a little bit. I mean, Defenders and Turbo and then Ram It Down weren't quite as good. But then by 1990, we'll get the Painkiller. So you guys can look forward to that. Um, I guess that's it. Um, who's uh, getting left off then? One more here. Do we? We do. Last album is Thriller by Michael Jackson. Nice. It's a comeback off after his '79 off the wall. Um, classics here, real classics, and Thriller, Billy Jean, Beat It, solid hits for him. Yeah, yeah, the riff from Beat It, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's. Uh, Cause I mean, this is kind of when uh, Michael Jackson proved that you can mix pop and rock. Yeah. Together, and you can sell to both audiences. Yeah, it was an interesting album like that. I mean, that's. I mean, this is still what the best-selling album of all time. So. I think that's right. Yeah. And then yeah, you got the. Th- I always found the song "Thriller" a little weird, because it's like it's intended to be creepy, but it's kind of not. So, uh, I don't get it. <laughs> it's weird. But, hey, it sold records, so. Michael Jackson wasn't complaining. Yeah, that's true. So that was the real last one? That was the real last one. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to have to drop Blackout. I'm probably going to drop Rio on this. Really? I am. Mm. Well, I'd say Blackout has more good songs than Rio on it. Yeah, I think you'd be right with that. So, um... Sorry, Rio. <laughs> You're out. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see you uh, next week for uh, 1983. Look forward to it. <laughs>